Hello everyone and welcome to another Drinking With, with me, Wine Time London, Brad, and my co-host, Chaba, from uh, Mr. Tokai Merchant's Instagram page. And, and Fine Wines to Me. And that as well, and Noble Green Wines and all that. But and, and probably a few other things as well. So. Yes, and we have uh, Alex Johnson here, who is a crazy cherry Cheers. fan. Uh, crazy cherry fan. Yes. Crazy. Yeah. So we're here today because it is Sherry Week. Um, we're talk, going to talk to Alex about Sherry and what got him into wine, what got him into Sherry. And yeah, try some amazing Sherries here from the Finos all the way to the fabulous PX uh, and some in and Ram as well. So starting off, Alex, what got you into wine? Um, good question. So yeah, started working in my local wine shop, probably just first year in college there for about five and a half years, knew absolutely nothing about wine, didn't even really drink wine at home. So you drink it out of a bag, really? The only time I drank wine was as a teenager okay. in a park, probably. So not not a good start. Um, after that, they sent me on a few of the WSET courses, where I must admit, each time we had fortifieds, I went, oh God, I don't want to drink sherry. It's... <laughs> It's vile. I think every, I want... everyone was like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, how far I've come since then. But then I think later on, maybe it might be 10 years later, listening to a lot of wine podcasts, things like that, and people just kept talking about sherry and how it was made. And it just kept, you know, the more I heard, the more interested it was. It's a very process driven way of making wine. Yeah. Uh, that I just found fascinating. So, went out, bought a bottle of Tio Pepe. You know, as, which we're not advertising. I'm, 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 but that's all right. But, but it is the, the start for most it people. Is, yes. It really it is. is. So, um, I mean, I'm from Dublin, so pickings were slim in the local <laughs> wine shop. It is so Tio Pepe. <laughs> so it was pretty much Tio Pepe or Tio Pepe, really. So, um, had a bottle of that. Got hooked. Went wandering around all the local wine shops, tried whatever I could. I think the first Oloroso I had was this uh, Don Nuno there. Um, and then the kind of love grew from there a little bit. We got, just, got a bit obsessed. We just have to say that uh, uh, Alex is actually uh, in the wine trade, but not in the wine trade. So works for Sip Wine Company. Good. Yeah. yeah. So I'm a uh, yeah. web developer. So yeah. yes. Um, I studied as a software developer, so six years of college, worked in a wine shop throughout that, worked then as a software developer for 10 years and essentially took a career break, moved to London, came to work in Noble Green Wines, where we are currently. Yeah, exactly. Um, Sponsor. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I met Chaba here. Um, probably why this... Rather a lot of sherry here, though. Probably the first yes. time we Bit met, my hand. we were drinking something else, and all we could talk about was sherry. So. Yeah. Yes, and and it's actually true that a lot of this is thanks to Alex when he was working in here in the shop, because uh, the rest of us were like a little bit like him back in the days. Well, yeah, sherry, we have to have it, but it wasn't really the most exciting thing. But he made us hooked up on sherry as well so it's uh yeah there was at least one advantage of you being here yeah Sorry, I'm just joking. you gotta <laughs> you gotta convert people like one person at a time with sherry it's almost like a hand cell um but yeah i think it's a little bit like the first time you green olives or something like that yeah, they're briny totally yeah. bit mad didn't like them it's like with a lot of stuff you end up loving in the end. They say it's like five times you've got to eat something to really know if your palate and taste buds like them. Yeah. So yeah. This, that is it with sherry. Like people say, oh, I've tried it once, oh, I didn't like it. Guys, you've got to, got to try it again because there's some absolutely gorgeous stuff, as Alex was saying, the show was leading to, that that is out there. From from super dry, super dry wines to some of the sweetest wines you'll have. Food pairings are amazing with all sorts of food, but we'll come to that in a bit. Alex is gonna to talk to us about where <laughs> Sherry is in Spain. Yes, essentially in Andalusia, between let's say Gibraltar and maybe going up towards Portugal. Um, so you've got three main Sherry towns, uh, which is called the Sherry Triangle. 
So you've got Hrath de la Frontera, which is slightly more inland, and that's where Sherry gets his name. The English bastardized the word Hrath, and that's where we get Sherry. Then further south, you've got Puerto de la Santa Maria, and further west on the coast, you've got San Lucar. Um, so why that's important then, um, depending where they are, Jerez is more inland, it's warmer. So when you're aging sherry wines um, under the floor yeast, um, the floor will be less prominent within Jerez than it will say in one of the more coastal areas. So you get more floor growing um, yep. in San Lucar, a bit less in Puerto, and then less again in, uh, in Jerez. And with that one, San Lucar being near the coast, yeah. That's a lot of people say to me they get that sort of coastal influence. Yeah, in the sherries that you can really taste that it's been been. So you get this sort of sea, sea spray, yeah, totally. salty, get, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, and that wind that I'm guess coming in gives gives it that. So I, I think what the reckon is because the the yeast, the the layer of the yeast growing on top of the um, the manzanilla sherry there, because um, it's more thicker. Yep. It's consuming more uh, yep. nutrients and glycerol, yep. etc. within the wine, so you just end up with a lighter, drier style. So, no, there. totally. No, it's just more the fact that when I taste them, you, you definitely see that. And that's a, another thing talking about sherry, that even from the different towns, you really get that sense of you're drinking a different drink. And then as well, so if, you, if we're talking about the... Um, what you call it, the biologically aged sherries. You'll see Fino, you'll see Manzanilla, what's the difference? They're more or less the same style, um, but if it comes from uh, Jerez or Puerto, we call it Fino. If it comes from San Lucar, we call it Manzanilla. It's usually on the back of the label, guys, so yeah. check your label and it will have a, a stamp and you'll see where it's from, which is quite good as well. And those, those wines then are great with things like sushi, fish and chips, Weirdly paired, I think, in a Rama Sherry with Raffaello's that shouldn't work. Okay, that's somehow okay. yeah. oh, that's a bit, it. a bit, a bit <laughs> controversial. I think it was because there was an almond in the middle yeah. that somehow made that work. I like, uh, yeah, and, and the creaminess. I like these like. sort of ones with with anything from the sea. I think yeah. it works. And then you got the, the the deeper, darker ones you can go with birds or or meat dishes. Mm. For me, yeah. So I think I think the how did you say it's what if it uh, if it swims then it's fino or manzanilla if it flies you go with a montiato and if it walks then you go with an oloroso. That sounds so, good to me. Mm. Yeah. Well, want to be introduced to sherry. What would be the first sherry you? Push? Good, good question, Chava. So I think it was probably actually two years ago. Um, I think I was manning the manning the stand in here for the, the mm. sherry wine week yeah. so I think we had a similar range out then and like no matter who who I gave sherry to everyone liked at least one of the range of styles because there is a lot of different types of sherries uh, yeah going from some of the driest wines in the world to some of the sweetest wines in the world so um, yeah it's it's hard to say if you're some, one of these people that likes let's say gin and tonics or yeah green olives that kind of stuff recommend like a manzanilla or a fino if you kind of then on the other scale you've got a sweet tooth we've got uh sort of creams like this which is a blend of oloroso and a px yeah it's usually 80 20 isn't it around that something like yeah. that yeah not not too sweet that's um, yeah, I think you can even have those with just on ice with a bit of orange, they say sometimes. Yep. Or else the other one then is, I mean, this stuff's seriously sweet. I mean, it's, this one's like 420 grams of sugar per liter. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, crazy. Even, you can see it on the cover. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the nemesis at wine tastings because uh, if you're using a spittoon and you got to spit it out, it, it doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't go doesn't anywhere. Come, it doesn't come out, yes. At, at, if you're lucky, it boomerangs back in your face. But, yeah. um, perfect, perfect with vanilla ice cream though. Perfect, like, yeah. A little glass of that, vanilla ice cream, pour a little bit on, drink it. It's, it's actually beautiful, guys. And then I suppose, yeah, Flavor profiles, if you're going for like an Oloroso or something like that, you're kind of talking, 
it's kind of nutty fruity it's sort of might be a little bit like a, a fruit cake but perfectly dry yep. pretty much yep so um and also you sort of talk about gin and tonics a pheno and tonic is a good drink yeah it's really starting to come out like try a pheno with tonic instead of your gin perfect summer drink or perfect for gin and tonic lovers try that test them out on it and see, see if they notice the difference um, yeah, exactly, and particularly in summer, it might be hot. You don't want to get too wasted on gin and tonics. Perhaps you just want a lighter cocktail. Um, apparently, I think some of the first cocktails in the world were actually sherry cocktails, but and something it, similar to essentially, I think it was the sherry. You're not wrong. Uh, yeah, it, it was a sherry cobbler. They, I, I listened to a podcast, and they actually thought about banning sherry because people were getting into alcohol <laughs> because of the cocktails, not just sherry for sherry cobblers. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's that's a true story so and then just to say that with the exception of the px which is a great variety um all the wine all the sherries are made from the palomino grape yep. which is like a very neutral grape variety um so it's more about what the the process of making sherry that gives it the flavor rather than the which the is one. which is a very different story than when you have still wine it's usually a lot of winemakers say it's the viticulture and it's the grape growing yeah compared to the the in cellar work but sherry's role is reversed yeah it's sort of i suppose while i suppose vineyards and things are still important it's all about more the terroir of the bodega yep. than anything else so they have these big high roofed bodegas where they age these wines in barrels and depending which town the wines are from, where the bodega is within that town, where the barrel is within the bodega yep. itself, that'll have an impact on how the wine tastes. Totally, because so, yeah, some of these wines are years and years and years old. Like, yeah. If, if they're in that Solera system, they could be... Mm. <laughs> well, Who knows, yes. As old as you, mate. Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get, I mean, yeah, you'll get... So some of these, like the average age of the Finos and Manzanillas here are probably like four and a half yep. years. And this Amontillado, which is essentially, um, that's average age of about 18 years. But um, yeah, you get stuff up to maybe 100 years average age. Yep, I've got um, some 30 year old at home. Yeah. So, yeah. Not and, years. yeah, just to explain basically, uh, when you see Manzanilla, or Fino, or any of these. Basically, Manzanilla and Fino technically is the same thing. It's just from different yeah. towns of the triangle, yep. the Sherry Triangle. Uh, and they, so will, they, will, they will have the floor, and then you have the Olorosos, the, the oxidative. So if, like, people just, just steer. So if, if you want a drier style, just go for Manzanilla, Fino. If you want to go towards the sweetest style, you can you can you go to a cream, a cream. cream so uh, essentially, um, any of the the manzanillas, yeah, finos, amontillados, olorosos will all be dry. Uh, when you start going into the creams um, and the Pedro Jimenez, the PX, they're going to be sweet. So all a all a a cream is essentially a blend of PX and also, yeah. At the moment, the UK, or Europe probably, but UK definitely, it's a, it's a huge shift towards sherry. And I think the, the whole um, sherry marketing is very nicely run. And uh, there's, a, there's a good, for example, this week, obviously, Sherry, yep. sherry Week, uh, all over the world. And it definitely puts them on the map. Yeah, but gives uh, them a spotlight. Yeah. And actually, yes. just, even if you can just grab two in ten that weren't drinking yeah. sherry every time and it just really pick up a bottle or something different like just try a try a manzanilla the lapita is perfect fish and chips perfect this in rama is beautiful beautiful a little bit more complexity just just try something guys and and it is really putting the spot, spotlight on sherry because it is a wonderful drink it's probably the price price wise it's the best quality price ratio you're going to find in a wine shop and especially if you go to an independent like Noble Greens, that we're plug like we're here today, but any good independent will have a good range of sherries that you should try. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, that's it from from me, Wine Time London. That's it from him. Yes. <laughs> and that's it from our guest Alex Johnson. 
follow him on social media. I'll put a little uh, hashtag and a little uh, Instagram handle for Alex. It's, it's, it's mainly going to be bird pictures, just to warn you. Exactly, uh, because he's you, strangely into, into birds. Into bird photography. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that <laughs> next time about Alex and his bird fetish. <laughs> but yes, and if anyone's around uh, southwest London, we have loads of sherry open. Um, yes, there is loads just, more Not, not just well. because of this no, video. There is loads but of sherry. Exactly I'll, I'll post some stuff about what else is open. So, yeah, pop in. You're more than welcome to taste loads of sherry here. And obviously, more than welcome to buy as well. And that was Drinking With. Alex. Alex Johnson. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Cheers.